So today I've got another mini PC here from Mini's Forum. Now this one does not have liquid metal in it. They have learned a bit from that blunder. This here is their X500 model, and it does have a very potent APU in it from AMD, which is the Ryzen 7 5700G. This configuration that they sent out to me, by the way, this is not a paid video. All the opinions expressed are my own, and they are not approving this video before I publish it. This one has 16 gigabytes of RAM, DDR4 spec, 3.2 gigahertz, dual channel, and 512 gigabyte NVMe drive, and it does run Windows 10 Pro. Inside the box, you will find a Visa mounting bracket, an HDMI cable, power cable. The power supply, this one is rather large. It's 220 watts, and there is a dust filter, which is optional. You don't have to put this on. And there is this user guide, which does show you how to install our expandable storage. Now the back of the X500 is where you'll find all of our useful ports here. We've got power in, HDMI 2.0, although this one does actually run my Algae CX at 4K 120 hertz, no problem. Display port, two two gigabit LAN ports, and then four USB 3.1 Gen 2s. We do have a Kensington lock slot there, so that's great if you wanted to use this as a point of sale machine. Here on the left of it, micro SD card reader, line in, mic in, headphone out, and even at the front, they do include a combo 3.5, so that's mic in and then headphone out, reset, and our power on button. You can see there's a vent here, vents all around it to suck in fresh air. And the top of it here, nice big vent, you can see our fan, and I will take a look at the internals, but I just want to show you too, the underside of it, so this is where we gain access. You need to remove these four screws. We do have the two mounting points there for a visa bracket, so if you're going to be mounting this onto the back of a monitor, you can do that. Oh, and don't forget, there is this that I showed you in the box. If you wanted to use it, you can. That's that magnetic dust filter there. And then gaining access to the internals there, just those four screws, very easy to do. You'll see we've got a bit of expandability here, which is great. So 2.5 inch bay right here for SATA 3. Another SATA 3 bay right here, so you could add a 2260 drive right there. And here is our 2280 MVME, that one. And our wireless card, we can change that. So there are a few screws to remove here to remove that holder for the 2.5 inch drive and that is underneath where you'll be able to access the RAM. And here we have our fan and a very large heatsink with all those fins on it. Now it does have thermal paste applied to this one. It does not have liquid metal after the PR disaster they had, of course, with the HX90. Now my HX90 had thermal paste. This has thermal paste. And that's why my HX90 did not have any issues. So this one, we won't have any problems with it causing any shorts because it's a standard thermal paste, which is non-conductive. And now our bias. So we have basically every single setting under advanced here unlocked to us. And that is great. Even RAM disk configuration. Now there's some interesting ones that I will show you. AMD CBS. Now one of these I'm going to tweak. Now we do have this. You can change all sorts of options in here. But the one that interests me is under NBIO common options, okay? We wanna find GPU configuration or graphics configuration as they call it right here. So this has already been set to specified. Now that is their pre-configured one. You can go to game optimized. Now I believe game optimized will be dedicating four gigabytes, but we can actually go and override this. So if I go to specified, you see we've got that option here. So that is very easy for us to go and dedicate then more RAM to that Vega graphics that this has on board, which is quite potent with this particular chip. So I'm going to dedicate here because I've got 16 gigabytes. I will just dedicate four. Now, if I had 32, I would definitely be going with four, which I believe it will do automatically. So that is the only tweak I'm going to be changing there. There's a lot of other things that we can tweak and change here. Some of them will also be the fan curves and things if you wanted to mess about with that. But let's get into Windows now. And on first boot, you will be greeted with the following setup languages. So these are the language packs that are already installed. 
Now this is an impressive APU that we've got on this one. The Turbo Max is out at 4.6. What's interesting, of course, is the graphics this has. It's Vega 8, well, the 8 cores, and it can clock up to 2 gigahertz here. RAM timings are nothing amazing. They're quite poor. CL22. Uh, my Intels, I can get with CL16, so a big difference. And I hope with the next gens of AMDs, they're able to fix this, give us better RAM. But running in dual channel there, not a problem. Windows 10 Pro, that's all approved and everything is fine and checks out there. And we are running 65 watts, so they have not decided to limit that because it's in such a small little PC, no. So that is another positive there. So taking a look here at the device manager, the Intel AX200, so maximum throughput on that one is about 1.3 gigabits. Uh, so very quick, very quick card, paired up to a Wi-Fi 6 router, of course. It does have Bluetooth 5 with this one, and I did test out my little M.2 SATA 3 drive, and that's running just fine. So that's the 2242 size, by the way, if you want to add additional storage there. And you have the 2.5 inch bay. So you can see the processor listed 16 times because it has the eight cores, 16 threads. How is the performance of it? So general performance, very, very quick. Any video file that I've thrown at it, so HEVC, VP9, all great. Spreadsheets, documents, all that kind of work, super powerful. As you can see, look at this score here. Geekbench 5, very, very good. For such a small mini PC, almost 8,000 points there is great. And a single core score, that is also very, very good there. And the drive speeds, so that Kingston drive that we've got in there, MVME PCI 3 spec, remember they do not have PCI 4 yet, AMD, but the next generation, I do hope they will be giving us PCI 4. I'm sure they will. So those speeds there are not amazing for an MVME drive. I've seen much quicker than this. So it's just a run of the mill Kingston here. It's definitely not a fast Samsung, unfortunately. The last little benchmark I wanted to show you right here is this. So Cinebench, very, very good, over 13,000 points. And remember, this is an unlocked chip. I'm not overclocking it or anything. I'm keeping everything stock. Now, I know a lot of people are going to ask me this, and that is, can we overclock with this motherboard? Well, it doesn't actually let us. Okay, so Ryzen Master does not work. Now, through the BIOS, you might be able to tweak it a little bit more. I have not toyed with that yet. Okay, so this is all just stock. So here's our Times by score. This just recently finished up. And you can see the score is a little bit below average of what we should be able to get with this particular model here, the 5700G. So I think a lot of people that overclock it normally, you can see the best rate there, that would be one of those overclocked ones that's probably even been cooled with liquid cooling and everything like that. So this one, of course, is just simply air. The other graphics benchmark that I've run here too is our Firestrike score. So for integrated graphics, this is an excellent result. Adobe Premiere Pro, so I'm editing 4K clips here. They are 100 megabit files, so quite demanding. With a quarter playback speed, it's fine. There is no drop frames there. I have noticed that if I run it at full, that's a little too demanding there. Now remember, I do have dedicated four gigabytes to the Vega graphics, so that is certainly helping out. So the timeline is fast. With simple, basic kind of edits, I don't really see any problem with editing on a spec of mini PC like this. Export times, let's take a look at those now and see how long it will take to export one minute of footage. Right where my mouse cursor is, that's one minute of footage. So start and then export. It should absolutely tear through this with this spec of mini PC. And you can see it is. Look at that, this should be under a minute. And there it goes, finishing up now. It's going to be about 43 seconds if we take into account my delay there to hit export. That is really good, very fast. Gaming performance. So I am starting out here with Cyberpunk 2077, lowest settings, okay, for our visual quality, the quicks preset, both of them on to low. And it is 720p. Okay, so 38, 37 frames per second. Mid 30s, getting to the lower 30s here. This considering the fact that it's only Vega 8 graphics here, this is not a dedicated GPU. 
This APU is running this game fine. Now take a look at the clock here for GPU on the upper left hand corner, 2000 megahertz. That's great, there was just a bit of a graf graphics glitch just then. Fan noise, I can't believe how good the fan noise is on this mini PC. It's like the other one that I've reviewed from them that has a very similar cooler in it. That It's just a slight whooshing noise and the RPM on the fan does not seem to change at all. So very, very good. So this is similar to console performance. I'm <laughs> getting run over here. I would say when I'm talking about consoles, I'm talking about the PS4, of course. It's probably even slightly better, but let's have a look when I get into a bit of a firefight here. Okay, there's no one around, but maybe the police will come. Okay, there's someone. So the frame rate... Okay, I'm not going to last long here. I've got everyone shooting at me. Still in the mid-30s, so that's good for an APU for Vega 8 graphics. This is excellent. Oh, and I'm dead, no surprise. GTA 5, this is on the normal settings, 1080p, so not even low settings, but the normal visuals and population density, view distance all set into the middle here. So you can see down to about 40s right here, but still this is great for integrated graphics. I mean, if this was the Intel's, even with the Iris XE, the latest ones I've been reviewing, they would still be quite a bit slower than this probably on average about 10, even 15 frames per second less, even though, yes, Intel did improve a lot now with their 11th gen integrated graphics. It's not going to compete with this Vega 8 here. That performance is really good. And even with a bit of action, randomly just shooting at stuff, no lag, very, very playable. And there we go with Counter-Strike. So this is 1080p, lower settings. And we're getting, well, 160 frames per second average right now. Very, very good. This is really playable. So if you've got a 144 hertz monitor or 120. Uh, these are bots. So that is why I'm able to actually kill these and not die here. Where are the human players? Well, that must have been a human. It was. So very, very good performance here. From that Vega 8 graphics with the four gigabytes dedicated to it. And how does it check out with our thermals? So there is no thermal throttling. The temperatures are very good on this. Take a look at this. After one hour almost, stress testing it, gaming, benchmark, Cinebench, Firestrike, all of that, it has not gone over 85 degrees Celsius. My ambient temperatures are approximately 24, 25, and it will pull around 80 watts, almost, the package there, okay? So that's a lot more than the HX version of these, the mobile chips. Now the fan noise, very, very good. It's just a constant whooshing sound. It's actually a pleasant fan noise, and I don't think it's really gonna bother that many people, but you do hear it if it's next to you. However, it isn't loud, so it gets a big thumbs up for thermals and fan noise. Finally, just briefly here, Linux support. So I could not get the Intel Wi-Fi AX200 card to actually work. The LAN ports are working, okay, so that's fine. The gigabit LAN there from Realtek, it's just the driver for some reason, which is strange because it does work on other tech I review. Normally, this distro of Linux Mint and the build that I'm using shouldn't be a problem. So you're just gonna have to hunt around to find and get that Wi-Fi driver. Other than that, Linux should be fine on this. Pricing, so it looks like on their website, it's up for pre-order now, so it's not even released yet, but of course they sent this out to me to review, but it will be selling for the 16 gigabytes with the 512 gigabyte NVMe drive for 850 US dollars. So yes, it is expensive, but it is a very compact, small size. You could build yourself something similar. I know the comment's gonna be full of that, that people will say, hey, I can buy the 5700G plus a motherboard, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can do it for cheaper, of course you can. But for some people out there, they probably just want a small compact size there that they can mount behind a monitor. 
So you probably won't be able to do that with your build that you're thinking about that is cheaper. But it all depends on your needs, of course, on what you really want out of a mini PC. So this, for the size of it, has excellent fan noise, very good thermals for the size again, from what I've seen on the mini PCs I review. And you do get the two expandable storage options. So you can add a M.2 SATA 3 drive, which is 2242, the size of it, or a 2.5 inch SATA 3 SSD or spindle drive. You can expand upon that. But for me, I really wish, just like the HX90, I really wish it had another high speed PCIe 3.0 spec drive. I think that would have been a lot better to have one of those in there. So build quality, it's plastic around the outside. We got the metal on the top here that the grill that lets all the air in and it disperses. You can feel the hot air coming out the sides of it too there as well. The wireless performance is good thanks to that plastic body and it is relatively easy to upgrade. This is the four screws on the bottom to open it up. You need another four screws to take out the bracket that will hold in the 2.5 inch drives. You can access the RAM, you can replace the wireless card. So it's got a lot going for it. But we can't really get the full potential, can we, out of that Ryzen 7 5700G. This is probably my big con of this one, that Ryzen Master not supported with this. They haven't enabled it in the BIOS. Now, I don't know if I can tweak a few settings in the BIOS to be able to overclock the GPU a little bit, but really, I don't think we have the thermal headroom for that. And the motherboard probably is not designed for overclocking the power supply. Well, it's 120 watts, which might be actually all right for that, but yeah, we can't squeeze the maximum out of this. Still very, very powerful and all up a decent machine. Now, if you're wondering about the HX90 that I did review, so my review unit did not have the liquid metal in it, okay? It had thermal paste, but they've sent me out this now to do a teardown on. I will take a look at their liquid metal application in another separate video, which will be in a few days. I'll check out the HX90. This is the replacement unit and see if the liquid metal is gonna be all over the place or not. So that'll be in an up and coming video. Thank you so much for watching my review here of the H500, sorry, the X500 from Mini's Forum.